Hi everyone, this is Steven. Welcome to your practice. I don't know about you, but one of the areas that for me gets sort of tight and uh, tense the quickest is my upper back. And I feel like uh, it's really important for me to do some regular maintenance just to get some active access, some movement, some mobility in there. And that's exactly what um, I want to do with you today. It's an area that is traditionally, but uh, well, less less mobile than say your shoulders, your hips. There's a lot of bones there. There's your shoulder blades moving over the rib cage. There's your spine. So um, it's not the same kind of movement that um, you'll find in some other parts of the body. But it's important to keep it nice and open, and to make the shoulders function well, to make your breath flow nicely, to help with your posture, and just the overall feel good feeling. Let's see what we can do in a short period of time. We're gonna start in down and facing dog. So you know what to do, or if you're new to this, spread your fingers wide, have the, the peace fingers of your hands facing forward so that the index fingers are parallel to each other. And then you can bend the knees a bit and lengthen the spine. So really straighten your arms and push your hands down on the mat. And I feel the hips telescope up and back away from the hands as far up and back as you can and here we're really trying to lengthen the spine as much as possible don't worry too much about straightening the legs you can always do that later on but it's good to focus on spinal length especially as we're getting to the upper back area here this is such a good pose to start because your arms are over the head your shoulders need to work a little bit the spine is lengthened your chest is nice and open. It's a really all-round amazing pose. Nice. Then look at the legs and bend the left knee quite a bit. We're going to turn the right foot into the midline, so there's about a 45-degree angle in that right foot. And all we're going to do is lift the right hip a little bit up and then turn it and lean it back behind you. Nice. So now we've uh, exaggerated that length in the right side body. And you're getting to the right armpit and the side of the ribcage quite nicely with this pose. Just lean into it. You're pushing the hands down. Keep the breath as soft as you can. And we're we'll straight to the other side. So bend the right knee a lot. Turn the left heel in. So it's almost like warrior one with that back foot. Keep the hands where they were. Lift the left hip up and then lean it a bit back behind you. So you're getting some nice length on the left side body. Under your arm, into the waist, into the side of the ribcage. Direct a few breaths there. You can also look under that left armpit if that feels okay. One more breath. Well done, lower the knees down. Now we're going to keep the knees or the hips above the knees. Walk your hands a big step forward and then invite the head to soften down. If your head doesn't come all the way down, just use a pillow or a block or something underneath it. A book can also help. And then we're not totally passive here, so we're pushing the hands down, almost like we did in down dog, except there's less weight on them, of course. And I make sure the elbows are lifted and the arms are working towards straight, more or less. You can rotate the elbow creases a little bit forward so that your arms are externally rotating. It's going to give you some more space in the upper back. Good, then walk both hands over to the top left corner of your mat. Place one hand on top of the other, and then pull a little bit back. When I say pull back, I mean the right hip is lengthening away from the both of the hands. And again, we're working a little bit on this side of the ribcage there and then both hands over to the top right corner place one hand on top of the other lift the hips up and lean them back there's not much movement here but you'll feel a good length in the side hopefully one more breath here good and return to the center keep your left hand where it is or reaching forward and then twist the right arm under you can place the side of your head down if you want and with the left arm, I'm gently pushing down. And with the right, the back of the right arm, I'm also pushing down. Right. And then let's modify it just to get a bit more access into that upper back. 
I, with my left hand, I'm interlacing the on top of the right hand, and I'm just pulling that right arm a little bit out. Nice. You can even round your back a bit, your upper back behind you. And it's going to give you some good access into that area. Nice. Slowly release. We'll take it to the other side. So it's right hand forward, left arm twisted under. Take a breath or two here. You can come to the side of your head looking to the right. And as always, if it's uncomfortable, then you might need to modify it. You can always put a blanket under you if it's a bit too low. Or just don't go that far. And then you might not be able to see it's behind me now, but the right hand I'm interlacing with the bottom left hand. And I'm pulling both of the hands a bit away from myself while I'm rounding my back slightly. Nice. Take a few more breaths here. Another inhale. Exhale, slowly release. Good, come to sit up onto your knees or in a cross-legged position, doesn't really matter. Let's come into cactus arms. Good, and then bring left elbow on top of the right. So the elbows on top of each other. Let's start with this one, just holding opposite shoulders. And then do a few circles around holding your own shoulders. Try to really get into the upper back. Keep your hips and the lower back as steady as possible. And then circle the other way. Nice. Might even feel little clicks, little noises around the upper part of the spine. It's not a bad thing. And then keep the left elbow on top of each other. Just start to bring the hands closer together. Maybe the palms are touching for eagle arms. Right, so lift, I'll show you from the side. Lift the elbows a bit higher. Then move your forearms away from the face. I'm squeezing the arms together quite strongly. And this force from the arms goes straight into your upper back between the shoulder blades, the back of the heart. There's a couple of sets of muscles, the lower traps, the rhomboids. They tend to get quite tight and they are often underused as well. Nice. Slowly release. Roll the shoulders out a few times. Good. And then right elbow on top of left. Hold opposite shoulders. We'll do a couple of circles with the upper part of the spine. So keep the hips, the lower back quite steady. And you're rotating the shoulders, and the head, and the neck. Nice change direction. Get in there. You're doing a side bend, a little forward bend, another side bend, a little back bend. It's a really good movement for the spine. And then bring the hands closer together. Maybe palm stretch. It's all good. Lift the elbows a bit. Move your hands or your forearms away from the face and then start to squeeze the forearms and elbows into each other. This force is nowhere else to go but to the inner border of the scapula, your shoulder blades. You're getting really into that, the tissues in the upper back. Feel the shoulder blades slide apart and your upper back become wider and more spacious. Nice. Slowly release, roll the shoulders. Right. Now, last pose is one of my favorites to get into the upper back area. We're going to step the feet wide. You can face any direction. Have the feet parallel to each other. And don't place them as wide as possible. You uh, might need to go a sh slightly shorter stance than you used to. Because we're going to go right hand to left ankle. So make sure you get a good hold. If it's too far, just walk the feet a bit closer. This is fine. And then hang down with the head. Now, instead of pulling myself to that left leg, sometimes we do that in some yoga poses. But actually today, I'm doing the opposite. I'm leaning the upper back away from that left leg. Uh, so it's almost like my back wants to go to the right leg, and then the arm insists on staying with that left leg. You can bend that right arm a bit. And I feel that shoulder blade on the right slide away from the midline, away from the spine. 
get like a really nice stretch there. It's not an easy area to get into, but this pose is a really good job of that. Good release. Let's go to the other side. Left hand holds the right ankle or lower leg somewhere and then lean back. So I'm allowing my back to round a bit and I'm also bending the left elbow. And I feel that left shoulder blade slide away from the spine and get the stretch. It's not a common area that we're able to stretch. So feel that stretch in the inner border of your shoulder blade there. Good. Slowly release. Come back down. Take a seat. Fold your palms. Thanks so much for practicing. I hope your upper back and hopefully your whole body feels a little bit more spacious. You can breathe well. You can move well. And I'll see you here again soon. Thanks for moving with me.